For our next coaster review, we are talking about the tallest and fastest coaster in Orlando. This is Mako at SeaWorld Orlando. And man, is this an incredible ride. This is a new for 2016 B&M Hyper Coaster. 200 feet tall, max speed of 73 miles per hour, over 4,000 feet of track, so many airtime moments. This ride is fantastic. Man, I love this thing. But let's dive in a bit deeper. The first thing you're going to notice about Mako is its great color scheme. I love the purple with that teal color, it really looks fantastic. It's an absolutely beautiful ride, and they did the theming well for it too. So you walk up to that entry plaza, and there's like shipwreck theming around, kind of looks like a shark habitat, and they do this cool thing where they take these waves and make it feel like you're actually underwater. It's very creative, it kind of gives that impression, so they also put up like shark facts and stuff. It's very well done. And then you actually walk through the queue line, and that's more just like nice landscaping, make it look good, you know. And when you actually get into the station, they have this awesome effect that when the train leaves, all these sharks like dive off in the same direction that the train is going. It's like a holographic like projection kind of thing up on the ceiling. It's really awesome, really kind of sets the mood. So I'm sure you're all wondering, you go on Mako, and where are you gonna sit? I got the chance to ride this coaster three times. I did front and back. I think no matter where you sit, you should aim for the left side at some point because the left is great for when you dive in towards the very end before you're going into the brake run. When you're up against that water, the left side is closest to the water. You feel like you can reach out and touch it. So because of that banking, I'd say aim for that far left seat. But I think you definitely got to try out front and back. I mean, if you go for the back, you're going to get definitely pulled more over those airtime hills and you're going to feel the drop a lot more. So I'd say back is probably the better seat, but front is good too. As with a lot of coasters, you really feel that wind in your face when you sit in the front. So you start escalating up that lift hill. Gives a nice view of that surrounding area, and let's just talk about that drop. My gosh, this thing is absolutely fantastic. This is what every B&M Hyper Drop should feel like. Out of your seat airtime, you feel like you're falling for a lot longer than you actually are. It's so good. And not to mention, it is perfectly smooth. This ride couldn't be smoother. I'd say out of the B&M Hyper Coasters I've ridden, it is the smoothest. I think that probably has to do with the fact that it is newer. It did just open last year, but no rattle, no sign of roughness anywhere. So right off the bat, loving it. You get thrown into this huge bank turn. You're going to get a few laterals there, and then you're falling back down, going to your first main airtime hill. Out of your seat airtime is super good. So next up, you got this big like hammerhead turnaround. That's actually kind of funny because it's a Mako shark, not a hammerhead shark. But anyways, that's when you turn around. And might I mention, this whole time, you're running up against a lake. So you're like going over water during some of these parts. So that just kind of adds to the experience. There isn't like any theming during the ride, which is totally understandable. But I think the setting for this ride is very well done. SeaWorld chose a great location for it. So next up, we have another airtime hill. You, there is a trim break on this one. So that is kind of a downside that you lose a little speed there, but still gives some absolutely awesome airtime. You're actually going to go into this bank turn underneath that first main one. And then this is a great moment. This is like a B&M hyper like speed ejector almost kind of hill. It's not your normal parabolic hill. This is a speed hill into the mid-course break run. It's not a typical hill that you're used to on a B&M Hyper, so that surprised me. I really liked that element. So you do slow down a bit on the mid-course brake run. I do wish it went a bit faster through that second half, but I can understand, you know, why the mid-course is there and everything. So it's not that big of a deal. You got another airtime hill after that, and then this is when you're going to go into that back half of the ride that everyone takes pictures of and stuff, because this goes actually over the main pathway and through kind of the Mako Plaza. It's two consecutive bank turns going either direction, and then you just glide over the water and into the brake run. It's a great ending. Some people say, oh, well, I wish it had that, like, splash effect like you get on Manta. I'm not really upset that it doesn't have that. I think it's fine the way it is. But just in general, this is a ride that when you walk off of, you're just blown away. You say, oh, what's an example of a perfect B&M hyper coaster? I think Mako is it. I've ridden a lot of these B&M hyper coasters, and I think this is my favorite. To me, because it has so much great airtime, and it's as smooth as can be, and it has a great setting, it's just going to beat out all of the others that don't have some of those elements. 
So even though it may not seem like a big deal, you know, setting can play a big role into it. I'd much rather take Mako setting over like Intimidator setting. That's, you know, over a parking lot. So what am I going to give Mako for its final score? Oh, you can sure as heck bet I'm going to give it a 10. I think as far as BM Hypers go, this is about as good as it's going to get. Would it be nice to see a few more airtime hills in it? Oh, sure. But length isn't an issue for this ride. I think the length is very good. This is a very re-rideable coaster. I think SeaWorld knocked it out of the park with this ride. This gives me great faith for future B&M hyper coasters coming because this was so good. This shows what a modern, technologically advanced B&M hyper can be. They've taken that original hypercoaster and they've just learned to make them better and better. So if you have this one as good, man, if they build a few more down the line, they're just going to keep on getting better. So that's my review for Mako at SeaWorld Orlando. Let me know about what you think of this ride, if you're a big fan of it, if you love it. Of course, post your thoughts about this review in the comment section below. And if you're new to Coaster Studios, you can check out a bunch of past reviews I've done that are all available in a playlist on my channel organized alphabetically by the coaster's name. And of course, make sure to hit that subscribe button, leave a like. And of course, I'll see you guys next time here at Coaster Studios.